This Labor Day, I took part in the Battle of Lake Erie reenactment. This battle took place during the War of 1812, and this Labor Day, 2013, was the 200th anniversary, the bicentennial of this battle. I was an official reenactor, and I got my special t-shirt of the day, and I was standing in for Josiah Briggs, who fought during that battle as a private on the schooner Scorpion. I was aboard the Appledore 4, which was standing in for the schooner Scorpion. It was a rather cloudy and uh, threatening day when we headed out of port, out of Put-in Bay, but by the time we got to the battlefield, it had cleared off and it was a beautiful day and the battle site was ringed with hundreds of pleasure crafts out there. Everything from a, a small sailfish uh, up to huge cabin cruisers. The Appledore was the lead boat uh, and we could see the other boats lining up behind us. This is the Niagara directly behind us in the American line for this battle. Historians were consulted and the ships went through maneuvers very similar, very close to what actually happened during the Battle of Lake Erie. When cannon fire was first heard, a cheer went up from our boat. The battle was underway. See the cannon smoke drifting across the water. That's one of the British ships across from the American line. Ships came from all around the United States and one from as far away as Norway for this reenactment. This was the largest naval battle reenacted in American history. Our little boat had this tiny little cannon which shot a shotgun uh, shell size uh, cartridge. The crew took care of this. They locked it. They loaded it. Yelled out locked and loaded. And then fire in the hole before they pulled the trigger. Even though it was little, it was pretty impressive, the sound it could make. During the battle, Commodore Perry, who was in charge of the American side, left the Lawrence, his ship, his flagship, that uh, was completely, de uh, completely incapacitated uh, during the battle, and he was rowed over to the Niagara, and during the reenactment this happened, uh, we didn't row him over, but he was taken over in a little motorboat onto the Niagara, and this is an actual replica of the Niagara that has been built uh, recently. And during the battle, Commodore Perry ordered this ship, which was still functional, to, go, to sail right into the British lines and to fire off both sides of the ship, broadsiding the British ships and completely incapacitating them. This was the first time the British Navy had lost a battle. There you can see it firing out of both sides of the ship. Uh, and the entire British squadron was captured. This was the first time that had happened. So it was a major turning point in the War of 1812. This is the Niagara slipping behind the ship from Norway, standing in for one of the British ships. It was a beautiful day. We were out there for about eight hours total, quite a, the two hours to get out to the site about an hour to reenact it, and then a slow sail to get back in. This adventure is part of my next book, A Thousand Mile Great Lakes Island Adventure. Please follow me and my book tour at laketrek.com. I'm currently touring with my, my latest book, A Thousand Mile Great Lakes Walk, which won the Great Lakes Great Reads Award. I'm very proud of that, and I hope to see you along the way.